Hi, I finally got the camera to somewhat work. I want you to know that this is broad daylight and look at it. It's as if I were in darkness. When I actually get rid of the special effects, which is a sort of shim the shimmering that you see, then it it looks like I have smallpox. So this is why I don't do face videos where you can actually see the mouth move at the same time my voice is moving. Because no matter what camera I pick, and I have three of them now, it's a nightmare. Two of them, three of them, whatever. Anyway, this video is going to be about something I just realized about why people get, how do I call it? Why do people get so different a set of values from each other? And why do they read the Bible so differently? Okay? I've been wondering about this for a long time. And I was talking to God about it just, you know, before I had to fight with the lights, which was about an hour ago now. And it, he suddenly hit me with these ideas, so you try them out. Each one of us, as we start out, we start out empty. We start out with a family, you know, mother, father, somebody around us taking care of us, changing our diapers, feeding us food, that sort of thing. And then when we do that, we get impressions, feelings, sounds, and even though we're a newly born infant, we make choices about how we like or dislike, want or don't want those feelings and sounds. We come to associate those feelings and sounds over, you know, a year or so. And they begin to categorize. So certain persons become associated with those feelings and sounds. Um, therefore, based, we end up choosing for and against certain persons based on feelings and sounds. Because that's all we know. Over time, those feelings and sounds begin to have a sort of sense to them. We begin to recognize the sounds as words. We begin to associate those words with feelings. And we're constantly making decisions pro or con. Once we start categorizing those feelings and sounds, we start to make a bunch of, as it were, matrices of values and we're basically crafting our own personality about how we want to interact or how we want to be relative to those values in other words your mother your father your sister your brother come around you they coo they ooh they ah they talk bad badly to you you're in the crib you're on the floor and you begin to choose which one of those persons you like, you dislike, you want to be like, you don't want to be like. And that determines your own personality, your own values, which begin to color how you read the world as you learn the words of all these, this language or languages, you're learning every single day you hear those sounds. So the very definition of the words you learn are colored through a lens of your developing values of what you like and dislike. So when you learn the word dog, you're not just learning dog. 
you're learning dog good, dog bad, dog nice, dog not nice, dog I like, dog I don't like. So your very definition of the words as you learn them is all, how do you want to call it, bundled up with your emerging personality that you yourself are choosing to be. So now, as you become like age 2, age 3, age 4, age 5, and in the age 2's you're practicing saying no, you're beginning to form values about every word that you learn, everything that you see people do, everything you're doing, even though your ability to analyze is zero. You're forming your own choices. And of course, if you like person A, and person A doesn't like God, then you won't either. If person A that you like, who you like, is big on family, then so you will be too. If person B that you don't like is big on math, then you won't like math either. Because you want to emulate and be like the people you like, even though your idea of emulating them isn't what they're really like, because you have no ability to discern. It's your imagination of what they are that you're choosing for or against and choosing to emulate for or against. Isn't that weird? So now let's just flip forward, you know, flash forward to your adulthood. By your adulthood, You've made a whole lot of decisions about who you like, what you like, what you don't like, what you want, what you don't want. And by adulthood, you've even got reasons that you tell yourself what you like, what you don't like, and why. And at that point, the name God is either a name you like or a name you don't like. Whether you accurately or inaccurately know this God, is quite beside the point. It's what your idea of God is that will rule your life. And to the degree that you want to hang on to that idea, irrespective of what any other information might factually be, that's going to rule your life too. That's going to color how you read the Bible. And what he was hitting me with the most, which is prompting this video, is that let's say that by the time you're 20, your number one value in life is your family and what you do. Then the way you interpret God, the way you read the Bible, is going to be all about what you do and family. And it won't matter what the actual words actually say. If your main value in life is theory and math and science, then that's how you're going to read the Bible too. Which means, of course, that you're going to try to say that the Bible is a load of bunkum because you're going to be prejudiced and think that faith is somehow um, the opposite of reason and science because that's the idea that you bought when you were young. And that's the idea you want to buy into now. So no matter how factual or accurate or scientific the Bible might actually be, you won't know. You won't be able, able to read it. Because you don't want to believe that it's scientific or accurate. You want to believe that there is such a thing as science versus the Bible, even when there isn't. Or, let's say your big thing is rituals and tradition and institutions. Then when you read the Bible, that's how you read it too. God, this is so 
frightening. What I'm trying to say is that we are so embedded in our definition of words from childhood onward that we cannot even tell when we're misreading anything, let alone Bible. That's scary. Peace out.